Thank you so much. Um, and thank you to all of my co-authors at CMU and Google and UC Berkeley for all their help with this project. So computer users today often have dozens of online accounts. I know I do. And each has to have its own password. And users are, of course, given a lot of advice on how to create strong and unique passwords. But the prospect of remembering a unique and complex password for every account can be overwhelming, as I'm sure a lot of us in this room know. So we were really interested in understanding how people actually manage all of their passwords. We wanted to use empirical data to actually look at that in the real world. Um, and we were particularly interested in password reuse. So are users actually creating strong and unique passwords for all of their accounts, or at least for all of their important accounts? Or are people just reusing the same password for every single account or for most of them? Or are they compromising somehow, reusing passwords or pieces of passwords on some accounts? while deciding some accounts are more important and using unique passwords for those. And so we wanted to look at that a little more closely. So we know from past work that users do reuse passwords to at least some degree, probably a significant degree, but we didn't necessarily know exactly how pervasive that was or what the patterns of full and partial reuse were in the real world. And we also know that password reuse can be risky. So let's use this user Jill123 as an example. Maybe Jill123 has an account on a news website, and the password for that is monkey1. And this is just a, an imaginary example. So one day an attacker compromises that website and gets Jill123's password. And maybe she doesn't even really care. Maybe that's her New York Times account, and she thinks, I don't care if someone can see what news articles I'm reading. Um, but Jill probably has other online accounts as well. And so that attacker, as we know, is probably going to try those credentials on other websites. And so maybe Jill didn't care about the news website, but maybe she would care if that attacker then can log into her bank account. And that might be true if she used the exact same password. And that might also be true even if she used a slightly different password. Maybe she thought, oh, I'll change the one to a two, and then it's a unique password and it's OK. But that attacker probably knows to try different passwords. So we know that reuse is risky, and we also know that it is happening to at least some degree because people can't manage all of their passwords. Um, but we wanted to find out more about exactly what was going on. And it's difficult to observe password use and reuse across all of a user's accounts in the real world. So most of the work in the past has relied on indirect and incomplete sources. Um, they've used self-reports like interviews and surveys. Um, which is great for getting real-world information, except it depends on what the user can remember and can understand and can tell you. People have used leaked password databases, which is great for getting real-world passwords, but usually just lets you look at one at a time for each user. And some people have also done lab studies or online studies where they had users create passwords specifically for the study, which lets you watch that whole process in an interesting way but we know that users might not always create passwords for studies the same way as they would for accounts that they really care about for their bank account information in the real world. And there are a few studies that have used field data to look at password portfolios in the real world. Um, Florencio and Hurley did one in 2007 where they distributed some password data collection functionality with the Windows Live toolbar. The great thing about that study is they had a big sample. They looked at about half a million participants over six weeks. And um, at least back in two 2007, it looked like there was a lot of reuse. Users, on average, tended to have about 25 accounts. And they only had about six and a half unique passwords that they were using across all of those. And um, Wash et al. also ran a field study somewhat similar to ours in 2016 that was presented at Soups. They instrumented the browser extension um, for Chrome and Firefox for users' computers. And they studied 134 students over six weeks. They also found a lot of password reuse. And they found that passwords with higher strength as measured by entropy were reused more often. So both of those studies are a good start. But the, um, one of the problems with them is that they both use entropy as a measure of password strength when looking at strength and reuse together. And we know that entropy is not really a very good measure of strength um, in terms of the actual guessability of a password. Uh, the Wash et al. study also only looked at students. And so we still don't really know 
what password reuse looks like in this decade for a diverse sample of users. Um, and these studies also didn't look at partial reuse, so they only looked at whether the exact same string was reused across different accounts. So we wanted to look further into that, and we have the unique opportunity to collect data like this with a panel that we're running at CMU right now. So we have this project called the Security Behavior Observatory, where we've instrumented um, users' home Windows computers, and we've been collecting data since 2014. Since that time, we've had over 500 total participants, and over 200 are sending us data at any given time. And that study lets us empirically observe these kinds of computer behaviors, like password use. So we have ecologically valid data about what people are actually doing at home. We have a diverse sample of users that's not just students. We have longitudinal observations so we can see what they do over time and how it changes. And we can collect a wide variety of data types. And so what we did for this study was update the browser extension that those users are running so that we could collect some data about password use and reuse. So that included um, hashes of passwords. Obviously, we wouldn't collect plain text passwords with the hashes. Let us see if passwords are reused across accounts. We collected hashes of substrings of four or more characters so we could see not just if someone uses um, the password password in more than one place, but we could also see if they were used just pass on another account or just word. Um, we collected the strength of the passwords, the length, the number of characters in different character classes, and some browsing metadata to give us context, like the URL on which the password was entered. And one important thing we did with this study that the past studies of password use in the field didn't do was use a strength measurement that's better than entropy. So we used a neural network guesser that was recently developed at CMU um, that's able to give an accurate measure of the guessability of a password, and it can run in a browser plugin locally so that the password doesn't need to be transmitted, and runs surprisingly quickly so that the users don't even realize it's happening. So I'll talk about uh, our results in just a moment, but before I do that, I'll give you some context to understand how we talk about reuse, just so that the words I'm using to describe the types of reuse we looked at make sense. Um, so I'll talk about passwords sometimes in the sense of a user's total number of credentials. So a user has seven different accounts, for example, seven different passwords, which may or may not share some strings. Um, and sometimes I'll also talk about the total number of unique passwords that a user has in their password portfolio, so the number of actual unique strings that they're using. So for example, this is just a made-up user. These aren't real passwords, but here's an example user that has seven different accounts on New York Times and a bunch of other websites, and they have seven passwords um, for those different accounts. And only five of those are actually unique strings. So most of the time if I'm talking about passwords, I'll just say this person has seven passwords, but sometimes I might specify that this user has five unique passwords. And I'll also talk about different types of password reuse. Um, and I'll use these same colors throughout the presentation so that you can keep track of what I'm talking about. Um, if an account has a password that's not reused, that will show up in green. Partial reuse only will show up in blue exact reuse in this pink magenta color, and exact and partial reuse in that darker color. Um, so to give you some context about what that means, um, the same user with seven different accounts, they have this password that's a mangling of usable. That doesn't appear anywhere else, um, even four character substrings of it, so it's not reused. That's uh, a password with no reuse. We have these two passwords for Yahoo and Google, and they're a little bit different, but they share this substring purity. So those passwords have partial reuse. We have two passwords for CMU and Facebook, and they're the exact same string. Um, so either of those passwords we would talk about as being exactly reused. And then we have these two for Amazon.com and Twitter.com that have exact and partial reuse. And what that means is if we look at, for example, the password for Amazon for this user, Security with a question mark after it both appears exactly on another account for their Twitter account, and it also uh, shares a substring with other accounts, that same substring security that appears on the Yahoo and Google accounts. 
So that's why we say that the Amazon and Twitter passwords for this imaginary user are partially and exactly reused. Um, so to give you an overview of the data we collected, we observed 154 users for an average of about 147 days. Um, for this panel study called the Security Behavior Observatory, we're constantly recruiting, which is why we observed these uh, users for different numbers of days, but on average, we observed them for several months. Um, we observed over 1,500 unique passwords, uh, over 4,000 accounts, over 2,000 different domains on which users were entering passwords, and about 22,000 password entry events. Um, so I'll talk about demographics a little bit. I'll talk about some of the summary statistics about password reuse. I'll talk about some grouping we did to understand how, uh, what strategies users use to manage their passwords. I'll talk about some regression models we ran to predict uh, password reuse. And I'll talk about some other models that let us connect uh, password use to other security behaviors. So first, the demographics. Our sample skews a little bit more female than male. Um, young, but not just student age. So we have users from 19 all the way to 79. The mean is in their low 30s. Median age is 26. And um, over 50% do have a bachelor's degree. So it's a relatively educated sample, but not all students and not all college educated, educated people. Um, and to summarize some of what we observed about password reuse, users had about 26 different accounts on average. The average user had nine point, about nine uh, distinct passwords. And we can already see there that must mean that users are reusing their passwords a lot because if they only have nine or 10 different passwords and over 20 accounts, there must be a lot of reuse there. Um, and looking at the percentages of their accounts with different types of password reuse, with the types of reuse I just mentioned a moment ago. The average user has 21% of their accounts with actual unique non-reuse passwords, 12% have partial reuse, 16% have just exact reuse, and 51% are exactly and partially reused, uh, like those examples I showed you a moment ago where the password is exactly reused on another account and it shares substrings with other accounts. We also use, uh, looked at reuse across categories. So you can see here on the x-axis, we have different categories of websites where we saw people entering passwords. On the left, there's shopping websites, which for some reason were the most common, um, educational websites, financial. And we thought maybe we'd see a big difference in terms of um, maybe users wouldn't reuse passwords so much on financial websites because that's information they'd want to protect. And that's really not what we saw. You can see here that um, that green bar that represents actual unique non-reused passwords is really small for every single category. And that um, dark purple or black bar on the bottom that represents partial and exact reuse. Um, these passwords that are reused in multiple ways is the majority for every single website category. We also looked at um, characterizing partial reuse because some people would, of course, ask, well, if uh, just four characters of a password are shared, but then there are eight characters that are added to that password that are unique, is partial reuse really a problem? So we looked at the actual proportions of characters of a password that were reused in these cases of partial reuse. And we found in most cases, um, four to eight characters were shared. There's a histogram showing that on the left. The x-axis is character length. And um, we found that in most cases, the non-shared portion of the password was just one or two characters. So what we see is people are using a base string and then changing one or two characters in it to make a new password. And we found that 61% um, of these partially reused passwords had the reused part as a prefix. So basically, some little piece gets changed on the end to make a new password. 52% had the reused portion as a suffix, so a few characters got changed on the beginning of the password. And that adds up to more than 100% because some might have both. There might be something inserted in the middle between some substrings that are shared. And so now I'll talk about um, some grouping that we did to understand users' dominant reuse strategies. So what we did here is we took users' passwords, looked at what type of reuse their sets of passwords had, 
and grouped users according to um, what more than 50% of their passwords showed. So there was one very tiny group of uh, unique password creators, people who actually use mostly unique passwords. Um, most of them had few online accounts. They didn't seem to use the internet very much. So either these are people who use the internet much less than the average modern user, or they're people we just didn't observe long enough to see them reusing passwords very much. Um, same thing with group two. There were a few people who just partially reused passwords. They also didn't use the internet very much, um, and they didn't have very many accounts. Group three, there were 17 users who mostly tended to exactly reuse passwords. 72% of, uh, of those users' passwords were reused on average. Um, some had lots of passwords. Some didn't have very many. Their usage varied. Um, group four, by far the largest. Most people were exact and partial reusers, um, 94 of our users. They were generally active users. They had 32 accounts on average. And 72% of those users' passwords were exactly and partially reused on average. So that's what most people are doing. They're taking a password and exactly reusing it in some places and using pieces of it other places as well. And we had a few users that used a variety of strategies, but they also had a great deal of reuse overall. So we also did some regression modeling. Um, first, to try to predict password reuse. So we actually ran two models here. One just to predict whether a password would be reused or not reused, and one to predict um, among the reused passwords how many domains it would be reused on. Would it be reused on one other website or 17 others? Um, and so we used password metrics, website categories, and some user and demographic variables in those models. So looking at the one that just was trying to predict whether passwords would be reused or not, um, the biggest predictor by far was just whether the password contained a digit. So if it did, it was much more likely to be reused. Um, if a password contained a special character, it was more likely to be reused. Weaker passwords, according to our neural network guesser, were a little bit more likely to be reused. And passwords used on job and work sites and on shopping sites, surprisingly enough, were also more likely to be reused. We also, like I said, looked at the predictors of how many domains passwords would be reused on. Again, we found that passwords with digits tended to be reused on more domains. And we found that passwords used on educational, financial, government, or portal sites tended to be reused on fewer domains. So that was a little less surprising. Uh, maybe if someone had a bank password, uh, they might reuse it on their other bank account, but they weren't reusing it in quite as many places as they would some other kind of password. And a portal site here is something like Google that lets you log into email and a variety of other services. And so we also ran some regression models to predict password reuse and also to predict password strength based on other behaviors that we can observe with the Security Behavior Observatory. Um, so we looked at the following variables in that model. Does the user have a password manager? Do they have security or privacy related browser extensions? Um, have we detected dangerous downloads on that user's computer? Have we detected malware? Uh, how many page visits per day we were observing for that user as a proxy for just sort of how much they use the internet? and whether that particular password was entered with autofill. And we use that to predict a few different things. Is the password reused at all, like in those other models? How many domains is a given reused password reused on? And then there was also a third model where we looked at those factors predicting the strength of the password. So um, when we looked at both of those reuse models with these security behaviors as the predictor variables, we found mostly that just how much the user used their computer predicted how likely reuse was. So users who browse the internet more were uh, more likely to have reused passwords, and their reused passwords tended to be reused on more domains. The other variables that we looked at weren't predictive in this model. And we also found it really interesting that um, when we were trying to predict password strength, we didn't find any correlation between any of our predictors and the strength of the password. 
And especially in the case of the presence of a password manager and the use of autofill, that was really surprising to us because we might have expected that people who are using password managers are helping themselves out and are able to create stronger passwords, hopefully, and to have more unique passwords. But that's not what we saw here. So in conclusion, overall, um, we had an, a unique opportunity here with this panel called the Security Behavior Observatory to observe how users are managing large numbers of passwords. And uh, most importantly, we're finding that they are both partially and exactly reusing passwords. They're mixing a variety of strategies there. Um, and they are reusing passwords on most of their accounts across all website categories, whether it's financial or something less important. Um, and users seem to cope with password demands with a variety of strategies, um, but the main thing is that they just are reusing passwords a lot. Overall, we also didn't see much evidence that the uh, standard expert advice, like using password managers, was actually helping users. And maybe there's some reason that we just weren't seeing that relationship in our data, um, but we didn't detect any relationship there. So the next steps for this, uh, this project are that it would be interesting to have more data. It would be interesting to have um, more time observing these users to see if their password behavior changes over time um, and with changes in expert advice. We'd be interested in running surveys and interviews to understand users' intentions, their mental models of what accounts they need to protect and how they're trying to protect them. And we'd be especially interested in looking at how home users are actually using password managers because our results there were surprising. Um, and we'd be really interested in finding out about challenges that, is, challenges that users might be encountering in the use of password managers. We're also curious whether uh, regular home users are using password managers in the same way that experts would use them or would recommend using them. We wonder if users are, for example, using the password generator functionality in their password managers to generate strong passwords or whether they're just using them like they would the browser password saving option to use uh, passwords that aren't particularly strong or unique. And so in summary, reuse is rampant and we'd like to do more research to understand how we can help users manage their passwords more securely. Right. Thank you. All right, thanks, uh, Jeremiah Blocky, Purdue University. Uh, excellent talk. Uh, so there's lots of uh, you know immediate questions that uh, might be interesting to explore. Did you look at uh, you know user confusion? If a user used the same password across multiple sites, uh, were you able to measure you know how frequently that user might uh, confuse the you know Amazon password and you know type that into another website? We, um, we do have the ability to look at that in our data. What we were looking at here were mostly passwords that we determined were probably the correct password entered on the website. So that's something we could look at, but it's not something we looked at much in this analysis. Okay, thanks. Let's switch to the machine if you don't Sure. Are you gonna put it on my computer? Okay. Or? If you switch it on again, maybe then it will. Yeah, so next um, question. HDMI. Were there any interesting outliers where um, maybe a user had a lot of accounts and used really good, strong passwords for all the accounts and vice versa? Um, in this sample, no. Like you saw, there were very few users that used mostly unique passwords, and all of them didn't have very many accounts at all. So there weren't any outliers that are what you're describing. There might be some in the world, but in our sample, okay. there weren't. Okay. Lorenzo Riccardi, Colorado State. Um, I thought the talk was really interesting. It's really interesting work. My my concern, perhaps, would be the number of people using password is probably several orders of magnitude larger than your sample. Sure. Um, how represent? How confident can we be in the represent in, uh, in the fact that your sample is representative, so to speak? I think we certainly can't um, be so naive as to say that this is a, a purely representative sample that represents what the entire population does. We think it's better than what some of the past work has done um, since for a field study we have a relatively diverse sample. Um, I'm pretty convinced that 
most users in the real world probably are reusing passwords a lot. I think we'd have to do more research to understand the exact patterns throughout the whole population, but we can at least gather that from it. Hi. Um, I'm wondering, did you have a way to measure whether or not users with password managers were actually using them, or perhaps you just installed them and weren't actively using them at that time? Yeah, we did look at that. Um, and that is part of why there was a variable I mentioned where we were um, looking at whether people were auto-filling passwords rather than typing them. And I didn't go into much detail about that because of time, but basically that also wasn't a predictive variable. If people were auto-filling their passwords, actually using some kind of password manager functionality to enter them, it still didn't make any difference in their reuse or their string. Thank you. Hi, uh, great talk from UC Berkeley. Uh, very related to that previous question uh, about these password managers. Are, are you including like just a browser built-in password managers, or are there password managers that might not actually have the uh, password generation functionality, or is this like any kind of password manager that you can When we looked at whether someone had a password manager running, then we were looking at third-party ones that we could detect as being installed as a browser extension. When we looked at uh, the use of autofill, then just because of how we were able to collect that data, that would include whether people were autofilling it uh, with a browser or with a third-party tool. And just another question or comment is, uh, did you do any analysis on the frequency of which people use certain passwords and whether there was some reuse pattern based on the frequency that they have to use? Yeah, we did look at that, and there weren't strong effects. Um, one of these models does have a small effect, and I'd have to um, look back at the paper to remember exactly what it was, just because it was small enough that we weren't sure how meaningful it was. Um, so that's that's essentially all we can say is that it may have some small effects, but we didn't. It wasn't a major effect anywhere. Okay, thank you. Also, I have a quick question. So you mentioned that you don't collect uh, plain text passwords. Mm -hmm. That's supposedly because of security. Sure. Right? Um, but you do collect hashes of uh, sequence of four letters. Mm -hmm. How difficult would it be to break that if uh, your database? That's a good question, and you're not the first person to have asked it. So um, I had a backup slide for that. But basically, we know that's um, a risk. We know that, in general, all the data we're collecting with this panel is sensitive. So we take a lot of measures. Um, we have, you know, specially secured servers at CMU that all this data lives on. Um, you have to have two-factor or special SSH key to log into them. Um, so, you know, we do know that those four-character substrings are an additional risk, but we do everything we can to just make sure that no one can get access to that data to begin with. All right. Thank you very much. Let's take our security.